All righty. Welcome back, everyone, to yet again another video. Every year in the NHL, there is always a huge batch of rookies who come in to the league and really impress us. And that's why they invented the award, the Calder Trophy. In 2019, Elias Pettersson won it. In 2020, Kale McCarr won it. And in 2021, Kirill Kaprizov won it. I think the difference between this year and last year is that it was really split on who should win the Calder. It's really come down to Sider, Raymond, and Zegres, unlike last year, where it was really just Kaprizov. Now, in this video, we're going to break away from our tradition a little bit and take a look at seven different rookies who have a chance at winning the Calder. Now, before we do that, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and comment who you think will win the Calder. Anyways, let's get into the video. So, before we take a look at the seven rookies who have a chance... I thought I would look at my predictions for the Calder Trophy at the beginning of the season, going back to September. And let me just say, these are actually terrible. Out of the 10 players that I cover in this ranking, only three of them are actually legit contenders for the Calder Trophy this season. Starting off at number 10, Connor McMichael. Number 9, Shane Pinto. Number 8, Jamie Drysdale. Number 7, Lucas Raymond. He's the one that I think could consider for it. Number six, Marco Rossi. Number four, Vasily Podkolzin. Number four, Quinton Byfield. Number three, Moritz Sider. And number two, Trevor Zegras. And then number one, Cole Caulfield. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that those rookies had a bad year, but they weren't good enough to make the seven rookie cut that I limited this to. Now, anyways, with my absolutely horrible rankings out of the way, let's get into the rookies that we're going to talk about in this video. Starting off with our two Detroit boys, Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond. So I figured I would pair these two guys together since this is the first instance that I can at least think of that we've had two actually really solid Calder contending rookies on the same team. And the crazy part is they are both different positions too and they're playing at a very good level in their first year in the NHL. Sider has been a defenseman, really put up a lot of points and is even argued as a top 20 defenseman. Lucas Raymond, on the other hand, has scored a lot of goals, gotten a lot of assists, and he's really performed offensively this season for the Red Wings. And that's why I think these two guys likely have the best shot at the Calder. Mo Sider's stats this season are at 80 games played. He scored six goals, has 43 assists for 49 points. He's almost at the 50-point mark in the NHL. That is surreal. And his other stats, a minus 10 for plus minus and 34 penalty minutes so he's been significant out there and he has 179 shots too by the way he has been really significant out there for the Red Wings as a defenseman he's argued as their best defenseman on the team and one of the best in the NHL when you look at Raymond he has played 80 games has 23 goals 33 assists for 56 points he is a minus 31 has 16 penalty minutes and has 179 shots those 23 goals as a rookie is actually pretty surreal. Like, this guy can score goals. He's a really good passer as well. And 56 points in your first NHL season is actually really, really good. And I think it will come down to Raymond and Sider. I wish there was a way where the two of them could win it at the same time and they could share the Calder Trophy. That'd actually be pretty cool. Now that we conclude our Hockey Town boys, let's go all the way down south to California where you see a player who surprised us in ways you wouldn't think. Here's Trevor Zegras. Now the things that Trevor Zegras has done this season for the Ducks and the NHL, I don't think anybody saw coming. This guy pulled off two Michigans and even pulled off something we've never seen before. The Zegras pass where he basically just lifted it up on his stick, launched it over the net, and Milano hit it with his stick. Even Zegras was surprised that he did it. When you look at Zegras' career stats, he's played 73 games, has 22 goals, 37 assists for 59 points. He's a minus 22 out there, has 48 penalty minutes, and has 171 shots. So when you look at Zegras, okay, so you, there's a separate part because he's been a little bit inconsistent through some parts of the season, but he's also put up 59 points, which is the most we've covered so far. And then when you look at the moves, the Michigans, the pass, like you just look at all that. I feel like this guy honestly probably does have the best shot at winning the Calder realistically with everything he's done this year. 
But I think it really would be mean to cut out Cider and Raymond because they've been unbelievable for a team that has really not been that good. And I mean, the Ducks haven't been good either, but they were pretty consistent until March where they just fell off a cliff. So I'm not really too sure what to think about Zegras. I think he should win the Calder. I think he probably does win the Calder if we're being realistic. I mean, with all he's done this year. But then again, I don't know. Now that we've gotten Zegras out of the way, let's go over to Toronto, up all the way up in Canada, where we take a look at our only Canadian rookie and probably the most controversial, Michael Bunting. So there has been this rule where if you are a rookie, no matter how old you are, you can win the Calder. There's been a lot of controversy on this rule. It was faced with Kaprizov last season, and now it's getting faced with Michael Bunting this season. Bunting is 26 years old, having played a season before with the Arizona Coyotes, but did not meet the maximum game requirement to be eligible as an actual player. He's still technically a rookie this season. And that's weird to think too, because the guy has played over 100 games and is still considered a rookie. So if you guys think that maybe they need to implement some rule changes with that, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, Michael Bunting has really taken it up a level from last season with the Coyotes to this season with the Maple Leafs. He's put up some great numbers offensively, but also defensively too. He has drawn over 30 different penalties, which is simply unreal as a rookie. Bunting has played 79 games this season, has 23 goals, 40 assists for 63 points. He has a plus 27, has 80 penalty minutes, and has 175 shots. Okay, so with me, Bunting, I don't want to say he wins the Calder because of how old he is. But then again, he's had an amazing year with the Maple Leafs, that you can't count him out, truly. And with his defensive numbers and his advanced analytics, he's been great. And he's really been a great partner for Austin Matthews, too. And I'm not saying that I'm rooting for him to win the Calder, but since I've been an Arizona fan for over five years, I gotta go with Bunting. Now, those are the four rookies that I think have the best odds to win the Calder. These other three, they don't really have the best odds, but they've still had very notable seasons that I thought I'd throw them in here for you guys to take a look at. We're going to go over to Nashville, Tennessee, the music city, to take a look at somebody who came out of nowhere, Tanner Janelle. Every year you have your surprise player, somebody who really comes out of nowhere that people don't think of. I think last year was Jason Robertson or Alex Nedeljkovic. Now, for somebody who studies stat charts and depth charts a lot, I had no idea who this guy was. Janot really came out this season and surprised everyone. This guy was not mentioned in any quarter rankings at all. Nobody had him mentioned nowhere. He wasn't even in like the top 20. And this guy just came out of nowhere and is really putting up the numbers for the Predators. And I'm sure Preds fans are very happy because their future is teetering. This season, Janot has played 78 games, has 24 goals, 17 assists, for 41 points. He's a plus five out there on the ice, has 123 penalty minutes and 121 shots on net. Not only has this guy been good offensively, but he's really put up the physicality. Like this guy has gotten into so many fights this season. He's gotten ejected and that's why his penalty minutes are through the roof. And I think he's kind of an underrated pick for the Calder. I'm not saying he wins the Calder, but he's a very underrated pick because not only does he bring the offense, but the physicality too. Now that we got the surprise factor out of the way, we're going to go back over to the Eastern Conference on a team who has struggled and take a look at somebody who's really performed, Dawson Mercer. Now this one didn't come off to a surprise as many people really thought. Everyone knew that Dawson Mercer was going to be a good player at the NHL level. We just didn't know this quickly. I'd say around the January, February mark, Dawson Mercer was considered one of the quarter finalists if the NHL season ended at that point. What really killed him was inconsistency. Mercer's stats this season are 79 games played, 16 goals, 25 assists for 41 points. He's a minus 21 out there on the ice, has 24 penalty minutes, and has 152 shots. So when you look at Mercer, okay, so this is why he's not really a quarter winner because he really kind of just dried out. Like, he just cooled off from his hot streak that he had in the middle of the season. 
And, I mean, that happens. This isn't a rookie, but Troy Terry of the Anaheim Ducks. He was playing unbelievable at the beginning of the season, and now he's really cooled off and nobody's really talked about him since then. But still, Dawson Mercer still needs to be considered one of the better rookies in the league because I don't think anybody really thought that he was going to put up these numbers in his first season in the NHL. Now, lastly, we'll move on to our last rookie for this video. We're going to go down to Florida now and take a look at forward Anton Lundell. Now, to take a look at our last rookie for this video, I want to take a look at somebody who's on a really good team and is putting up really good numbers, and that is Anton Lundell. He's got to be definitely one of the more underrated rookies in the NHL. Nobody's really talked about him much this season, and I think the reason why he doesn't win the caller this year is because of the guys above him and the team he's on. Florida has been the highest scoring team this season, and in the past few years, they put up crazy numbers. They've scored nearly 300 goals this season. Now, his stat totals this season are 64 games played, 18 goals, 26 assists for 44 points. He's a plus 32 out there on the ice, has 18 penalty minutes, and has 125 shots. He's been good. He's been underrated this season, but the team he's on, I'm not sure he wins it because when you look at the other players, you've got Sider and Raymond, who have been on a pretty weak Red Wings team. You look at Zegres, who's been on a bad Ducks team. You look at Tanner Janot, who's been on a mediocre Predators team. And then you look at Dawson Mercer, who's been on a pretty bad Devils team this season. That's why I kind of solo Bunting and Lindell out, and that's why I think they have less of a chance to win the Calder because of the high-flying scoring teams that they're on. And that concludes... Who wins the Calder 2020-22 edition? So that'll do it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching yet again another one of my videos. This is actually video 800 on the channel, which is simply unbelievable. I cannot believe I made 800 different YouTube videos. Crazy to think. Now, anyways, if you guys want to see some more content and take a look at our other trophy discussion videos, Take a look at the eye icon right here. You can see the other two that we made this season. We've made the Norris and the Vesna. We're probably going to stop these for a little bit. Not before the finalists come out. I want to make about two more of these, and then we'll stop it. But since playoffs are coming up, i got to make the series previews and all that good stuff. Talk about my predictions. You know, there's a lot of videos i got to come out uh, this coming weekend, so expect a lot of content from the YouTube channel. Anyways, thank you for watching. For our supporters, I really do appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.